Hi, and welcome to Tmux from Scratch, a video series where we'll learn about Tmux, a terminal multiplexer. In this first video, I'm going to give you a quick overview about what Tmux is and its fundamental concept. We're also going to take a look at some practical examples of how Tmux can improve your terminal-based workflows and learn the basics from scratch. I invite you to follow along and get some hands-on experience. All the concepts and keybinds may seem overwhelming at first, but with some practice, they'll be second nature to you in no time. Feel free to pause and rewatch some parts of the video if you need to. I also encourage you to do some more experimentation of your own. Just follow your curiosity. In the next videos, we'll learn about the configuration of Tmux, setting up keybinds and some useful options. We'll take a look at scripting Tmux and also have a look at a few plugins. Of course, we'll also learn how to make Tmux a little bit prettier and I'll show you my personal configuration. So let's have some fun and get started. So what is Tmux? Tmux stands for Terminal Multiplexer. It allows us to create and control multiple terminals from a single screen. It even allows us to detach from these terminals and keep them running in the background. When you start Tmux, a bunch of things happen. Tmux starts a server in the background. This server then creates a single session with a single window containing a single pane inside it. The Tmux client then connects to this session and displays it on the screen. Let's unpack these last few sentences and explore their concepts in a little more detail. Tmux uses a client-server architecture. The Tmux server manages sessions. There can be one or multiple sessions. The session itself contains one or more windows and the window takes up the whole screen. Each window can furthermore be split in rectangular panes. And each of these panes is a pseudo-terminal. The Tmux client then connects to one of these sessions and displays it on the screen. There can also be multiple clients connecting to the same session. This can be used for pair programming, for example. Within a Tmux client, you control the session. You can create new windows, panes, or even other sessions. Also, simply switch to another session. The Tmux client is closed when you detach from a session. But you can always restart the client and reattach to another session. Some terminal emulators like Westterm have similar concepts. You could think of sessions as a window in a terminal emulator. Tmux windows are like tabs and Tmux panes are like splits in a terminal. One of the advantages of Tmux is that you can use it with different terminal emulators. So if you try out a lot of different terminals like Ghosty or Westerm or Alacrity or whatever, you can simply take your session and window management with you and have the same experience across all terminals. You can even use Tmux on remote machines over SSH. You could then detach from a session there and keep things running even if your SSH connection gets disconnected or if you simply want to work on a remote machine at a later time again. You would then simply reconnect over SSH and reattach to the session. On local machines, if your terminal crashes, you can simply reconnect to the session and go on where you left off. Tmux is also scriptable. You can set up complete sessions through scripts. There are also many plugins available. For example, you can save and restore sessions or fuzzy find stuff or do a bunch of other cool things. Now that we have an overview of the basic concepts, let's actually install Tmux. You can find installation instructions on the Tmux wiki on GitHub. I will put a link to the Tmux wiki in the description. Since I'm running macOS, I'm just gonna do a simple brew install Tmux and be done with it. So let's start actually using it. After installing it, simply type Tmux inside your terminal. By default, the screen status bar appears on the bottom of your terminal. On the left of it, you can see the session name. It's zero by default followed by a list of windows. By default, Tmux uses zero-based indexing for everything. It's not always handy for keybinds and this can be changed in the settings. We'll stick with the defaults for this video. So each entry in the window list has also an index, followed by a colon and a name. You also see the asterisk here, which indicates that this is the currently active window. By default, Tmux uses the name of the currently active process for the window name. I'm running ZSH as my shell, so that's why it's called ZSH. In the default configuration, you can also see the host name as well as time and date. The status bar is also used to enter interactive commands while in Tmux command mode. We'll explore this a little bit later. So to get started, let's just create another window. We'll use the default keybind for that. Tmux key bindings work with a prefix key. It's a similar concept as a Vim leader key. The default prefix key is control B. So Tmux keybind consists of the prefix key followed by another key. For creating a new window, the default key binding is prefix C. So we'll just type Ctrl B, C. So another window in the list of windows appeared. Let's fill this window with something. Let's maybe run Btop. You can see the window name changed to Btop. Let's switch back to the first window using Ctrl B and the index of the window. So Ctrl B, zero. By the way, I'll create a little cheat sheet with the most useful keybinds for you. I'll link it in the description below. You can also get a list of all the default keybinds right within Tmux. Just type prefix question mark. So control B question mark. 
In this list of default keybinds, you can actually use the motions to navigate around. Use HJKL or Control D or Control U. And you can even search forward with slash. Let's search for window. Navigate through the results with N or capital N. You can also use Control F or you could use Control B. But Control B is a little bit special because Control B is the default prefix key. And so you actually have to press it twice to make it work. Let's just search for Control B, Control B. Here you can see this shortcut actually sends the prefix key, so Control B. This is also useful if you want to use this shortcut in other programs running inside Tmux. So remember, Control B, question mark for all the default key bindings. Let's leave this view with Q. Let's actually look at a few useful keybinds for managing windows and panes. So we already know how to create a new window. Control B, C creates a new window. But you can also split windows vertically with Control B, double quote as well as horizontal with control B percentage sign. To switch to a window, you can use its index. So control B zero through nine takes you to the window with the corresponding index. Let's do control B zero again to go to the first window or control B one to go to the second window here. If you simply want to go through the list, you can also do control B N for next window. If you're at the end of the window list, this also starts again from the first window. So control B N again, and now we're on the first window again. Control B L selects the last active window. This is also marked in the windows list below with the hyphen. So now this last window is window with the index zero. If I press control B L now, I would be focusing on window with the index zero now again. Let's focus the window with index 2 again. I told you in the beginning that the windows will be named by the currently active process running in this window. If you have multiple panes inside this window, the window will be named after the process inside the active pane actually. So if I run htop here maybe, you will see that the window will be named htop. If I now focus the split on the left, which we can do with Control b left arrow, you see the window name changes to ZSH again. Let's run C matrix here. So to navigate between splits, you can use Control B and the arrow keys. So Control B arrow up and I'm on the top split now. Control B O goes to the last active split. So now I'm back at the C matrix split. We can also zoom single splits. So if I press Control B Z, I could zoom this so the pane takes up the whole window. You can see in the window list below, there's a big Z indicating that you have a zoomed pane here. You can unzoom by pressing Ctrl B Z again. You can also break out one of these panes into its own window. Just press Ctrl B and exclamation mark. So C matrix is now its own window, as you can see in the list below. If I change to the last active window with Ctrl B L again, we can see the remaining panes here. Let's focus htop again. If you want to close a split, you can use Ctrl B X. You see in the status bar, there's a prompt coming up asking you if you really want to kill a pain. We'll say yes now. So this is gone. Let's create another split again. If we just kill the process in the split, so if we press Ctrl D to leave the shell, the split is also destroyed because there's no process running inside it anymore. Furthermore, if you close all the panes inside a window, the window will also disappear. So let's just press Ctrl D again. And you see the window with the index 2 is now gone. By default, also the indices are not updated when you close a window. This can also be changed in the settings, by the way. Let's split up this window again. Fire up htop again, just to have something running here. You can also close a window, including all its panes with Ctrl B ampersand. You'll get a confirmation dialog again inside the status bar. Just press Y and now the window is killed. One more thing I want to show you here. Let's focus the next window again. As we know, the windows get named by the active process, but you can change the name of the window manually. Control B comma enables you to rename a window. So maybe a useful name will be like and subscribe. Seems like a good name. Maybe it inspires you also to like this video if you like it and subscribe to this channel. There are many more default keybinds. The ones we've covered so far are the most useful for managing windows and paints in my opinion. But feel free to have a look at the other default key bindings with Control B question mark. Just scroll through them, see if you like something and just try a few things out. Now let's talk about session management. So when you start at Tmux the first time, it creates a session called zero. We are still running this session. 
Control B, D lets us detach from this session. And this session just keeps running in the background. We can reattach to a session anytime and just pick up right where we left off. Let's try this out. Just type Tmux attach. And you see, we're back in this session. Without any further arguments, this command actually attaches you to the last used unattached session. If no unattached sessions exist, so if other clients maybe are connected to all the other sessions, it will simply connect to the last used session. We can of course create multiple sessions. Let's take a quick look at Tmux man page to learn how. Just create a new window here, Control B, C, and type man Tmux. Inside these man pages, we can use slash to search again. So let's search for new session. Press N a bunch of times until we actually go to the section new session. So here we get all the info we need to create a new session. The new session command also has an alias called new. We can enter command mode inside Tmux to actually enter commands. So press Ctrl B colon to enter command mode. You see the status bar turns orange and you can actually enter commands inside here. So let's just type new and press enter. A new session was created. You can see on the bottom left, it's called one. Actually, our Tmux client also just connected to this session automatically. You can type Tmux LS, which is an alias for list sessions, to actually see all the sessions that are available. We are attached to session one and we can see that here. We could also detach from this session with control B D and list the sessions even without being inside of Tmux. Actually, we could also use any other Tmux command from within our shell. This enables us to use scripts to control Tmux, which is very powerful. Let's create another session here, but this time we'll give it a name. Just type Tmux new dash s dot files. So we could use this session to edit our dot files. Let's go into our dot files directory. Maybe start new vim inside here and open our aerospace config just as an example. By the way, if you want to learn more about how to configure aerospace, check out the video inside this card. I will also put it in the description. Let's disconnect from this session again with Ctrl B D. Do another Tmux LS. And now we have three sessions. Let's attach to a specific session we have here. Let's use an alias for attach this time, Tmux A, which is an alias for attach. And then we'll define our target session with dash T and let's connect to our first session again, zero. Now we're back in our first session. Also very useful is switching sessions from within the client. We use Control B S for that. There's a session switcher thing here. We can even have previews of the windows inside there. We can open up this furthermore, get a better view of the windows. Also have a look at the other ones. And we can just activate a specific window. So let's get back to like and subscribe. You can use Vim motions here again, by the way. So if I selected like and subscribe and just hit enter, we we'll just directly switch to this window within this other session. Oh, but we were inside the sessions, right? So you can also use this as a window switcher, but you can also switch to another session. So let's do this again. Control B S and go back to our dot files. Enter. Let's create another pane here. Switch back to another session. Open the session switcher again. And now we can see we can drill down here and also drill down inside of a window and just activate a specific pane. You can see in front of each line is an index. You can also use these index numbers to directly jump inside one of those windows. So let's go to four and jump inside this end pane. So you see this is the active pane right now. We'll go on with configuring Tmux in the next video of this series. If you want to learn more about FCF, which we'll also maybe use for scripting something for Tmux a little bit later, click on this video here. If you're still around now, write Tmux rocks inside the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. See you around and take care.